campuses of various higher institutions of learning in Nigeria, every student from across the country is offered the opportunity to study. This study cuts across remedial, diploma, higher national diploma, as well as degree programs of all categories. But whether one studies in the university, polytechnic, or even college of education, as the case may be, the campus remains a place of experience, inevitable for students, hence campus life. Welcome to the main campus of the University of Jos, one of the famous in Nigeria. And as you can see, there's a heavy traffic order behind me, though not of cars, but of human beings, to be specific, students. This is a common feature and a daily routine on campuses. What is so special about life on campus? Is it because it is a starting point for professionalism? Or is it all about the students and the lecturers? Could it be about the structures? Or is it simply the general lifestyle on campus? These are things that come to mind when life on campus is mentioned. If you are a first timer on campus and you probably consider number or crowd as a perfect description for a market for a market place, you prob you may as well consider that there is much more in academics than buying and selling. Some consider it a common destination for future leaders, as well as those who aspire for a successful and prosperous life. Looking at the number of students on campus today may instigate the question whether the campus is a place for all and sundry. In other words, whether it is a place for all those who want to be there. It does not matter who comes to the campus to study. One thing that remains a common and memorable experience to all is the registration process, either as a new or returning student. As an institution of higher learning, Campuses are characterized by different people of different colors, with different cultural backgrounds, and of different status. But regardless of the huge differences, people do relate. As a matter of fact, relationship on campus is inevitable. But even so, while some relationships are based on friendship, others might be of other motives. People are entitled to their opinion about certain things in life. Maybe that is why we differ in the way we eat, the way we speak, the kind of relationship we keep, and of course, the way we dress. Talking about dressing, the Advanced Learner's Dictionary defines dressing as an act of putting on clothes to cover our nakedness. The essence, therefore, is to present human beings as social animals with high degree of decency and rational thinking capacity. But because of the varying weather condition and climatic differences, different clothings are made for different seasons and reasons. Also, special occasions and convenience at a particular time influences our dressing pattern. However, when people begin to wear bedroom clothes, to walk on streets, or wear costumes meant for performances on stage to campus, it questions our understanding as rational thinking human beings. So if the adage that how you dress is how you are addressed is anything to go by, it then calls to question the indecency in dressing. It is quite an irony that an institution meant to be a place of learning now constitutes a place of high degree of moral decadence. That dressing the way we do is a matter of choice does not justify the indecency it poses, nor in any way reverse the ever increasing trend of the intolerable social vices associated with it. Think about indecent dressing. Well, I don't really think there's anything like indecent dressing because people dress to suit their mood. People dress, people have their own different, it could be culture, it could be different ways. They just feel 
any the MD, they just feel this is the best way for them to dress and they dress and go to school. That's what I think. So are you comfortable dressed like this? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm comfortable dressed like this. I am. And you feel you can go anywhere with this? Yeah, I am. I am. I can actually go anywhere because I'm comfortable with it. That's why I actually wore it out of my house. All right. Thank you very much. Right. I went to the and dressing, we use some people dress because they want to cover their nakedness. And dressing is also part of designing. So, about your appearance. Appearance. Okay. Um, I guess I'm looking good. <laughs> and I'm, mm, I'm looking very smart. And I can feel it. I'm very smart. Actually, I came here for a show to so dance on stage. What can you say about the attire general? Attire general. On campus. On campus. Hmm. Different people with different um, tests. You know, sometimes you just feel like dressing skimpy. As a student, I I would just advise you to dress very smart so that you will be very smart in your class. What do you mean, skimpy? Skimpy like mini skirts, you know, skimpy tops, tight tops, hugs, spaghetti, and and all that. But someone like me now, do I? How think, does it make you feel? Um, some make them feel very comfortable. That's what they feel like wearing, and some don't like it. Some just prefer putting on trousers like this. <laughs> So, what do you say about the own local fabric? Local fabric. Hmm. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. You no, know, when someone like me, if I'm putting on my traditionals now, I think you really appreciate me being an African lady. So it's really good. I appreciate our African dress. It's perfect. Uh, one in a million. So, uh, really, as a theater artist, this this philosophy or ideology I have that surrounds my theatre profession and as a person I believe that life generally is theatre and theatre is life. But there's just one thing I perceive about life on campus and that has really got to show that if as you exist on campus you're not mindful of the fact that one day you shall get out of it, you will definitely be left behind. Knowing fully that we're in the 21st century it really shows that you really have to meet up with the peace. But of course, you also have to be mindful. Mindful of where you're coming from. And that will help you to know where you are now. And of course, it will detect and determine where you will be tomorrow. So life on campus, actually, as a theater artist, I'm serving as a watchdog. I take me and that's my responsibility. So all I try to do is to discipline myself within the realm of reality that one day I will definitely leave this environment and for that reason it's also my responsibility as a theatre artist to also try to bring out to those who seem to forget where they are coming from to place it before them to just remind them hey bros you will leave this place someday so life on campus is actually very very interesting but you should not just let it carry you off and get you off track because you'll be useless to you well the way people dress on campus may vary a lot, but the due process of learning is definitely a common phenomenon. While lecture halls are being unavoidably jam-packed and noisy, it becomes almost impossible to assimilate.
Kansas leadership have not been able to transform the permanent site. The University of Georgia is over 32 years right now, and since then, up to now, the system has been very, very poor. And sometimes you do stand up for almost three hours. So how are you finding that? I'm short of words right now, but honestly, it's not good. But as I said, for the past few years I've been to school. Um, let me say, I've only slimmed down due to some stress and facts that, like the lectures, sometimes the noise, you can't even hear what your lecturer is saying. Some of the jottings you'll be guessing. So, I think the school should be, the school management should be able to get a public address system so as those students who are sitting behind be able to grab what the lecturer is saying. Thank you very much. Alternative lecture centers like the open air theater, which is supposed to compensate for comfort, fares no better apart from being reasonably spacey. In fact, one has to learn on hard cemented seats, under scorching sun, bringing to mind the reality of the Stone Age. Stage rehearsals also distract other students' classes. As a matter of fact, you know what you want and you know how to get it, so calling it survival of the fittest is a way of encouraging yourself. But if you are one of those who think life on campus is boring, from the academic workload, then think again. Right, yeah. So all of another people work at club. Unaga club. You get one place where just go one day, you know. When I want try me, then other guy they just cause in at eight because the shoe they don't change. I'm just for the crazy. What am I with it? But that exclusive. That exclusive. extracurricular activities, which means it is secondary to one's study. But isn't it an irony that many have made careers from participating in such activities? Or how better can you describe politics on campus? Apart from study, which is the main aim of the students being on campus, it is interesting that the students involve themselves in other activities. Politics is one of those interesting things. The students engage themselves in politics, they form various associations that they unite themselves and share various interests and try to protect those interests. The SUD, Students Union Government, being the father of all. They print posters, 
They have various slogans vying for various posts annually or per semester, just for them to have a feeling of unity among themselves. Politics, therefore, is one of those interesting things that students feel they should find, they should engage themselves in, and it helps a lot. One would not even be one would not be wrong to say it forms a fundamental part of future politicians in our country, Nigeria. Evidences proved that some key political figures in Nigeria today actually started from campus politics. If you think this is a practical class for political science students, you may be wrong. You can call it career in the making. Can you tell the difference between a student in politics and a full-fledged politician? Certainly doubtful. Except that while politicians are mostly from the class of the rich and famous, the students strive to exhibit their political potential with so much pressure from the ultimate reason of being on campus, which is academics. Struggling from the discomfort of accommodation and life in the hostels, the student knows exactly what they have to bear and, if possible, make fun out of difficulties. It sounds like mixing business with pleasure, yet it's worth it. Whatever the student does from the day he steps on campus for his academic pursuits and social engagement, the hostel is where he returns, rests, reflects, and meditates on the day's events, whether in comfort or not. Welcome to the famous Abuja Hostel of the University of Jos, a home while at school. But how do they cope, considering the provision of amenities such as light and water? Well, let's hear the view of one or two of the students. Welcome. Good morning, sir. Do you live in the hostel? I do. So, how do you feel being in the hostel? Do you feel comfortable? Yeah. The hostel is a cool place. I feel very comfortable staying in the hostel. You prefer staying in the hostel than staying off campus? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because there are a lot of things that make staying in the hostel very interesting. Like security, and then the water, and then sometimes the light. Is the light and water constant? Not really constant, Sha. Especially the light. It was after the Aluta we had. The lights became a little bit constant, yeah. but then still, I'm still finding it very, very good as far compared to off campus now. It's better. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Do you live in the hostel? Yeah, I live here, Abuja Hostel, Central Valley. Ah, okay. How long have you been staying in the hostel? Mm, roughly one year and some months. Do you feel comfortable staying in the hostel? Hmm. The hostel is the best place anyone can stay presently because we have everything from ranging from students, uh, socialism, and everything you can think of. And there is education background. And there's constant supply of water and light. Uh, not really, but the last time we had, um, will I say, Aluta, we have to, we made the agreement with the government for them to give us, I mean, 15 hours light for per day from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. But water, concerning water, is the same because we use electricity to generate, to pump water to the tap. So it's the same hour. We normally fetch water from morning, that's from evening to the next morning. So what's Aluta? What's, I don't know if you can tell us. Aluta, like what can, Ken Sariwa said, is denial of rights is an invitation to fight for it. Aluta is, is will I say, is an agitation. We, we fight for our rights. When Once we have been denied a right for something or a, a normal social amenities, we fight for it. And that is what we call Aluta. The agitation and the fighting, propelling of force, using the dialogue, followed by the, the, the rally and everything. That's what we call Aluta. So how effective it is? <laughs> very, very effective. With little I know. <laughs> For the past how many um, years I know in university, which I, we, the, the, the easiest way to get our leaders to do something for us is when we fight for it, through using the channel of Aluta. 
that has been very, very, very effective. That I know. All right, thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We do you live in a student female hostel? Yes, I do. How long have you been staying there? For three years. Okay, so do you feel comfortable staying there? No, but I don't have a choice. Do you have a choice? So if you have an, an, an alternative to stay off key, you prefer going to off key? Yes. Is it because of the water, the light, that you don't want to stay in the hostel or because of one reason or the other? Because of the toilet. Because of the toilet? Yeah. The toilets are bad or is it that our ladies misuse the toilet? Yes, ladies misuse the toilet and you know because of that there's this outburst of toilet infection. Yeah. So you prefer staying off key than in the hostel? Yes, where I have my own toilet to myself. And privacy and other things? Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Understand. Just that um, for some while now, the light has not been consistent. You understand? There has been. I know it's getting things example. I need to be reading the light. I feel like I don't use candle. I can't use candle, so I need that light. Even if I have a table, I need the light to charge. I feel like the water is consistent. So I try. But um, about the toilet is very difficult. Because the way we do our thing is easier for the girls. It can be prone to any kind of disease and all that. So we need to concentrate more on the toilet. You understand? The lights, you know how they behave the other folks. The toilet and all that. You need to be really chosen. So what about your friends? Okay, do you feel more? As if, do you feel comfortable doing your at school? Very, very. More than the way you are. Okay, the hostel. You know, for five years I've been saying the hostel. Not like I first was in it anywhere. I can, at the first thing in town, you understand? Yeah. But hostel. I like, I, feel like me, I, I like simple around, you understand? Yeah. I enjoy seeing my friends around. So I can get bored in town. Okay. I don't get my so I like this too. Okay. This people around, restaurants everywhere. I think you like it. Well, I've stayed in this, this school for like, this is my final year. I've stayed there for like four years. And I, I must confess, you know, the, the sanitary condition of the hostel is not really too good. But the sandy bathrooms, the toilets. It's not really too good. So I would wish the school authority would do something about it. Because I've heard so many cases whereby girls have infection, you go to the toilet, you know, you go to the hospital, the little money you have, you know, you, you start wasting it on treatment. And you know, you, you definitely know that these infections have side effects, maybe later on in life. But not just that, talking about water for like three, four days now, we're losing water because there's no light. Because automatically, if there's no light, that affects water supply. So I wish the school authority to also do something about water, you know, and light, because all these things are basic necessities that are very important. And so the general condition of those, so the atmosphere is really good. The workers are really trying. It's okay. They do really alter their original plan. Because that's what they like to do. The single room is actually supposed to be made for one person. Whereby an investment is the best you're supposed to be a right for us to fight for our people. The head, which is the administrator of the school now, they'll find it very difficult to attend to the students. Look at the water now. There is no water. There is no light. And students are suffering. The time that you're supposed to use to go and read, you are there busy doing from morning to night. Can the VC itself? I think the reason is because it's because the VC don't have a soul in the vessel of jobs. That's why it's treating the most. Forget the fact that we came from a very poor background. But there is something you're supposed to know in mind that we are in to all of us. Go to the toilet. You find it very well that somebody upstairs will be bathing. Why in the middle floor? The water upstairs will be dropping on top of your head. Is that a good leadership? Let's not just find it very well to attend to the student. Look at yourselves. That everything, the student come to the electricity. We, the student, we are the one to go and buy water and do the electricity by ourselves. Who's supposed to be having that? Look at the director. They don't do 
place in the form of what? Flower. For me, it's not a generator, it's a flower. Is it because they got gen? Tiki and Mabel should be happy for them because they got the generator. It's not done. The governor of Abuja was there, I've decided, which the university of Abuja have decided to fight for a right. A denial for a right is an institution to fight. Thank you very much. The bottom line is considering the good times and bad times, the smooth run and the huddle, and indeed all that life on campus has to offer. Is it worth writing off the bounties of campus life? Certainly not. After all, it's so much fun that even those who have graduated after many years still love and cherish the memories of life on campus.